Welcome to Powered by Her, exploring the stories of how area women power their business. Hear from the growing network of female entrepreneurs of the Upper Cumberland with your host, Tiffany Anton, director at the Biz Foundry. Powered by Her starts now. Hello, you're listening to Powered by Her in the Hinton Oakley Podcast Center. And today we have Emily Newman in. Hi, Emily. Hi, Tiffany. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining and what is your business? So I feel like this is kind of a different realm than and we've done before. So what's what is your business? My business is Emily Newman Fine Art, and I specialize in oil paintings. I have a stationary line, some phone cases, some fine art prints, um, oil paintings on canvas. Most of my work is um, whimsical interpretations of nature, of structures. I do some... Um, Nashville city skylines, churches, barns, cherry blossoms, birds. What made you decide to start a business in art? Okay, so it was never really um, a choice, I would say. Um, I was always an artist as a little girl. Um, I used to spend hours um, sketching in, in my own imaginary world. But I never knew that um, you could make a living at it. Um, so I would say that, um, I worked a couple of safe jobs and when I was in my twenties, um, my family, we moved to new Orleans and, um, I remember my first experience on Royal street, um, walking in and out of galleries and I had never really been exposed to anything like that. And, um, I saw an artist by the name of James Michalopoulos and he would uh, interpret the French quarter buildings in this sort of distorted manner. And he used a lot of texture and whatnot. So, I got my first big inspiration from him and some of the artists there um, that were in the galleries. And I realized I'm like, hey, I, I want to do this, but I don't know how I've never been trained and I didn't have, you know, the self-confidence that I think that it takes. So um, at that point, I bought my first canvas and paints and um, I started just practicing it every what day. What was the first thing you painted? Gosh. First thing I painted, I'd say um, I have a I painted a frog for my son's room. Okay. I wanted to kind of decorate the house with my own art. So I painted a frog and that was a fun experience. And um, but so just lots of lots of experimenting. Let's put it that way. And I experimented and and painted a lot for years. And um, along the process, I would uh, Facebook had just sort of launched this was back in like 2007 2008 and I posted some paintings online just for fun and I the response was people were messaging me and they were wanting to buy my work which was shocking to me so um, that's how I started selling online and it just sort of grew from there but I wasn't taking it as seriously as I I really wanted to in the in that process from um, 2005 to 2011 I had three sons so I was busy um, but so I it was just kind of a hobby at that hobby, time, a, a hobby, but I had a, a life altering situation happen, um, about, I don't know, uh, a year, around a year ago. And I was sort of backed into a corner where it was like, go get a job that you're not passionate about. You're going to be working for someone else or just really take this art by the reins and go full force and just see what happens. So I chose number two and it's been amazing ever since. Um, everything has worked out and um, I'm very pleased with the outcome of my decision to go in the direction of my dreams. So how do you figure out, okay, so you're, you're a talented artist. How do you figure out how to run a business from that? Um, well, it's, I will say um, I've had, you know, a little bit of help from other business owners um, asking them questions, um, sat down and have coffee a couple times with people who have their own business. Um, I will say the business side of it is definitely not as much fun as the painting side mm -hmm. of it or as going out and selling my art. But I know that the business side of it has to be done. Like you have to eat and you have to drink water. You, you've got to do your books. You've got to run your business. You've got to post on social media. So I know those are things that have to be done to further my craft. So um, it might not be as enjoyable as the painting, but it's you got to do it. So, yeah. What makes you um, any tips that you have that allow you to to feel motivated to get it done? 
Um, I would say that every morning when I wake up, I used to have this like list of things that needed to be done. And that may sound crazy to people, but I totally dropped that list. And what I do is I go on a uh, how do I feel basis. And that's how I go about my day. Um, So if I wake up and I feel like sitting outside on my porch and watching birds for an hour and drinking a cup of coffee, I'm going to do that. I know that's going to be nourishing to my soul. And then that way I can tackle the things that need to be done with more of a, um, I don't know, a clear mindset. So my day would go based on how I feel. So if I feel like doing, you know, business stuff one day and I'm really motivated to go in that direction, I jump at that. As soon as I'm inspired, then I'll go in that direction. Um, but if I feel like sitting and painting for two weeks straight and not doing business stuff, then (laughs) I'll do that, you know, and I know that the business stuff will get done. It may get done in a crunch time manner, but it'll get done. So do you feel like that kind of puts a little, do you prefer, is that working out for you to like, let it just go and maybe get it done in crunch time or some people are highly motivated during, yes, it, 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 it it works out very well. Um, because before I was really stressing myself out, um, with the list and, I have to do this or I have to paint this. Now I'm like, I, I say, well, what do I want to paint or or what do I want to do on the business side today? I ask myself the question. I wait for the answer. And then that's the direction that I go in. It's kind of just um, trusting my intuition all day long. And it's mm-hmm. it's working out quite well. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's good that you've be, been able to be successful in in start launching an entire business and a uh, uh, in that way yeah. who where have you found emotional support for your business and and kind of you're you're about a year in now and so it's been quite the journey i'm sure over the last year and so where do you get support um most of my well i'd say all of my emotional support um i've become very self-reliant so um i really trust myself and i trust my intuition and um if i'm having a bad day i've learned how to um get myself out of that rut. I think we all uh, can have low points. Um, The point is just not to stay there very long. So um, emotionally, I've, like I said, I've become very self-reliant and I like that because I feel like it's, it's very empowering to be able to rely on yourself um, as opposed to, you know, it's okay to call a friend. That's, that's great. But if you can get through something on your own, I think that is um, amazing. So Mm -hmm. We're going to find out some more um, information on how Emily gets some support in her business. In a second, you're listening to Powered by Her in the Hints and Oakley Podcast Center. I'm Tiffany Anton with the Biz Foundry, and you're listening to Emily Newman with Emily Newman Fine Art. So emotionally, you feel like, okay, I can, um, I I gain a lot of strength when you, you are able to rely on yourself. What about professionally? So you've mentioned that there's a couple other business owners that you've had coffee with, is there something you do consistently to find support for your business aspects? Um, I think that uh, the Biz Foundry is excellent. That's somewhere that um, I've gone to um, talk with people, answer some questions that I may have business related. That's been a, a, a really good um, source of information. Um, and then uh, I, I have a close friend who's an entrepreneur and she's been very helpful. So, um, yeah. I'd say that there there are definitely resources out there. I think sometimes people get afraid to maybe ask and 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 I think we're all just here to learn from each other. So do you find that just kind of putting yourself in the community with other entrepreneurs is is helpful? Um, absolutely. I think it's um I think being able to uh connect with other entrepreneurs, hear their experiences, things that they're going through. Um, it kind of makes you not feel so bad if maybe you've gone through something similar and then you think you're all alone in it. And then you're hearing that someone else has gone through that. And then they have a totally different approach of how they handled it. And then you can kind of compare notes and then, um, find a solution to maybe a problem that you're having that fits you a little bit better. So you often refer to yourself as an artist. Do you refer to yourself as an entrepreneur as well? Um, I, 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 sometimes I do. I, uh, it's, it's been something that I've, I've, um, I've struggled with, but I know in my heart that I am an entrepreneur. Um, I get that, but, um, yeah, calling myself an artist is definitely a lot easier than entrepreneur, but I'm, I'm very proud of how far I've come. So maybe I'll start 
referring to myself <laughs> or as an entrepreneur as a little bit of both. Yeah. Which seems more satisfying to you because, you know, you like you said, as a, a kid, you, you grew up coloring and, you know, doing art, but you didn't necessarily think I'm going to grow up and own my own business. I never thought um, that. And even probably 10 years ago, you didn't think I'm going to own my own business and my name is going to be on my business card, Emily Newman Fine Art. Um so do you think at some point you might feel just as proud to be an entrepreneur and running your own business as you are of your art? Absolutely. I think I think why it's hard to say the word entrepreneur is because you just nailed it. Um, like when I was younger, I never thought in a million years that I would have my own business that wasn't even on the radar. So I think because it happened so organically and it wasn't like, well, I'm, when I grow up, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I think when, you know, that's, that's exactly, you know, what I'm thinking right now is that, um, why I can't, why I can't say it, why I struggle with why it it's so a hard much. Hat yeah. To wear. I yeah. think, I think it's, there's two types of entrepreneurs in the world. I think that there are serial entrepreneurs that are like, I don't care what I'm going to do. I just don't want to work for the man. Mm-hmm. I want to work for myself. And there are people who are like, I just have a really big passion in, XYZ and I just wanted to see XYZ come to fruition. And so um and I think they're very different types of entrepreneurs. And um do do you think you could see yourself starting any sort of other business? You think that entrepreneurial bug is going to get you at all? No. No, <laughs> I don't. Um I think that I th- for me, I think that um in order for me to do something, there's got to be like so much passion behind what I'm doing. And I feel like that I was born an artist. I think I came out of the womb with a paintbrush in my hand. Like, I just think that's who I am. I I don't see myself, but you, Hey, 10 years ago, I didn't see myself as an entrepreneur. So right. I, I don't know where the next 10 years is going to take me right now. I just, I'm going to focus on the now moment. <laughs> And be, yeah, be grateful and yeah. excited about what's going on. For so, sure. Any advice that you have had over the past couple of years that really, truly kind of set you in the right direction for this business that you've started? Um, advice. I would say, hmm. I would say it sounds so corny. Um, follow your dreams. Follow your dreams and and really, really believe in yourself and know that if something is if something is inside of you um, and it's and it's brewing to not ignore that and to to go with your gut and um, to, to go in that direction with all of your heart and don't let anything stop you. Did you have anybody that was kind of feeling that passion for you? In the, over the last couple of years or I think the artists that I follow, um, you know, there's a couple that I follow very closely. James Michalopoulos, I mentioned him earlier. Um, I follow Aaron Hansen. She's a, a modern impressionistic artist. And I watch their um, I watch their success. I watch what they're doing. And um, they and with social media, I mean, gosh, it's so easy. You're constantly being flooded with things that you're passionate about, you know, you follow the right people that are popping up on your feed constantly. I would say other artists are a huge inspiration to me. Seeing them at the level that I'd like to be at is, um, is very inspiring. You mentioned the level you'd like to be at. So what is that level? Where do you think, when will you have known you made it? My dream is to have my own gallery. Um, that's my dream. And so every day that's the big goal So what I do is, you know, I have this big goal and then all the little things that I do every day are going towards that big goal. I know one day I know I already feel like it's mine. I know that one day I will have it. Um, It's just a matter of when I'll have it. And along the way, I'm I'm learning. But I feel like to me, having my own gallery is. Maybe then I'll be like, I made it. I'm an entrepreneur. I don't know. Maybe I'll have a different mindset. But yeah. What do you think that you'll you'll give yourself the credit of I, I am in this realm of these other artists I follow or I feel like I'm in, I feel like, um, skill wise that I I'm, I'm there. I just, um, I feel like, uh, I'll just need to get there maybe more, um, 
physically like they've probably been doing a lot longer than I have. You know, I don't, I don't know. I try not to compare myself to others because I feel like everybody's like on a journey. Right. So I'm just, I'm okay with the journey that, that I'm on and And where you're at. Yeah. And I I know that, I know that it will happen. It's just a matter of when it will happen. So what, um, have there ever been times over the past couple years that you thought, nah, this is, this is getting too hard. Maybe I should throw in the towel and, and go out and get this quote unquote real job and, and not get paid to do what I love. Um, I think that, I think that we all have self doubt and that it can arise. Um, for me particularly, I've learned that if that self doubt comes knocking at my door, I, I greet it with love and then I, I send it on its way. Um, it, that I, I think that thinking of those thoughts is, is not really going to get me where I want to be. So I just dismiss them. I don't, I had um, one guest say that she doesn't want to get stuck in indecision prison. And so you can get so swamped with like, Oh, what, you know, do I go left? Do I go right? Do I keep going straight? And, and, and you can get wrapped up in your head sometimes. And, and often it's just keep going on the track that you know, you, you belong on and don't let those, those doubts kind of steer you other ways absolutely i think you have a intuition and i think if you can learn to listen to that intuition you know trust your gut it's what you hear you can learn to listen to that intuition um i really believe that the purpose of your life is joy and i believe we all came here with something that we can do um to to bring us joy so if you follow that joy if you're always going on that path to follow your joy i I don't see how you could really you know fall too hard you might trip, yeah, but you just get back up. Yeah, we'll find out more a little bit more about joy in a second. You're listening to Powered by Her in the Hints and Oakley Podcast Center. I'm Tiffany Anton with the Biz Foundry, and we have Emily Newman with Emily Newman Fine Art. So, joy, um, do you think that it's easier or more difficult to be a female entrepreneur because we follow that passion and joy probably a little bit more than men, our counterparts, do? Um. It's- do I think it's easier? Um, hmm. Does that passion push, push us forward or hold us back? Man, I think passion, no matter what your gender, is going to, to push you forward. Um, I think males and females, of course, are so, so different, not just in their anatomy, but just in the way that we think and the way that we feel. I know that I walk through my life just in a state of feeling, and I'm very in touch with what I'm feeling. So I think if you're in touch with your emotions and if you're making decisions based on what feels good, as opposed to, well, maybe I should do this because so-and-so told me I should, or I don't know if I should do this or not. If you're constantly following those feelings and those intuitions, then um, it's going to lead you in the right direction. Yeah. And I I think sometimes females are a little more in touch with their feelings of, um, to, to trust their guts a little bit more and not thinking about the numbers necessarily. Um, but I think you that 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 can go across either gender. I think absolutely. You, can, um, you know, passion can be found in anyone. Yeah, for sure. So, um, what advice would you have to anyone starting out? Anyone starting their own business? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that first of all, find something, of course, that you're really passionate about. Because if you're not, you're going to struggle with it. It's going to be a struggle. So find something that, you know, is, is, is you, is it really resides with you. Um, ask questions. Um, always ask questions. Find people that are doing what you're doing and, and talk to them, get to know them, find out how they um, got on their path. Um, when I started, I listened to a lot of po- podcasts about female entrepreneurs and I would get just so inspired Um, and I think, you know, just go in that direction and and have a really strong belief in yourself. I think sometimes people don't believe in themselves as much as they can. And I think we can all achieve whatever we want. I think it's just a matter of whether or not we believe that we can do it. How you mentioned that you weren't confident as an artist to begin with. Um, and you mentioned that you were really inspired by listening to female podcasts do you real do you do you have the confidence now to say yeah I'm an inspiration to other people? Do you? I I think I know that because I I do hear it 
um, on my external world. You know, I hear that, you know, and people are complimenting me. And, and at first I had a hard time receiving those compliments. And now I'm like, yeah, that's right. I am good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I can accept that compliment. Um, totally. Yeah. So that, and that takes a little bit of time, I think, to get that. Yes, I deserve to be here. I am one of these artists. Um, you know, could you see yourself going to New Orleans and having a Arts. Absolutely. I see myself there all the time. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think it all starts in your imagination. Have you gone to New Orleans to just sell on the street? No, no. Well, so when I lived there, I didn't, you know, I wasn't painting at the level that I'm painting now. That's another thing you have to realize. You know, I think people see me now and they see the maybe the level that I am painting at and they think like that just happened overnight and that didn't that was a lot of that was a lot of failures but I not was, but this is all yourself right you weren't you know I work didn't, with an artist no or, never I so I taught YouTube myself videos at all mm, I watched a little Bob Ross I'm not gonna oh, lie good. I'm not gonna lie <laughs> I learned some basic technique from him just about do you oil talk painting. about happy trees and stuff while you paint to your birds do you talk to the birds oh yeah the birds and i always have they're they're always singing at me they're a huge <laughs> inspiration so i kind of tune everything out and I so just you have happy birds. birds and not happy trees so well the the birds singing make the trees happy oh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so um as far as going back there and and selling of course that's a dream of mine i'd love to have my art in a gallery there so yeah of course yeah. Anything's possible, right? So what are your what are your next steps? What are you what 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 can we see in the next year from Well, you can see a lot more um expansion in my work. Um that's that's for certain. Um I think as I gain more self confidence, as I grow as a person, that's totally reflected um in my work. And then um uh I'm I've got some things up my sleeve for sure. But, you know, like I said, the, the the end result is I want to have a gallery one day. So that's right now where my primary focus is. Do you think do you do you anticipate that being here in the Upper Cumberland region or do you anticipate Nashville or? I'm not 100 percent sure where it's going to be. I'm kind of just the wind's kind of blowing me around right now. So um, I, I it's it's not the right time yet, but um when it is, then I'll have an answer for you. Yeah. What, but you're open to to either possibility or even not even in Tennessee necessarily. I think I'm. I think I've I've landed in Tennessee for a reason. Um, I, I was born here. I was born in Nashville. My family left when I was four, and we moved out to Florida. Um, but sort of for some reason, I'm back, and and I love Tennessee, and it's very very inspirational to me. So, um, I'm I'm thinking Tennessee. Um, maybe more in a in a bigger city um, where there's more tourism, where people can, I don't, I, I love Cookville. Don't get me wrong. I, I'd like to see Cookville grow a little bit more before I um, debut my art gallery here, but yeah. it, it's possible. Yeah. I mean, it's growing a lot. Do you think it limits you being here? Do you feel like you have to go to Nashville a lot more often? Um, Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, and I do travel to Nashville in the Franklin area. It's just more such, it's just got more people. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, it's just more saturated, but um, I have sold a lot of art in Cookville, so I'm not going to knock Cookville at all. Yeah. You know, I love Cookville. I've met a lot of art lovers, you know, that have bought multiple paintings. So, but it helps being in a big city. It does. Yeah, that's good. Um, any other last minute advice that you, or anything that you want to tell the listeners about, being an artist, being a female entrepreneur, anything? Hmm. I think just, uh, it sounds corny, but follow your heart. Yeah. Follow your dreams. Don't give up. Don't listen to self doubt. Don't listen to anybody on the outside. The most important person that you can listen to when running your business is you. You can take advice. You can ask for it, but ultimately ask yourself what you really want and then go in that direction. I can tell you I've had a lot of success, which I question a lot. You know, I'm like, well, I don't get it, but it's truly to me because I believe that I'm going in the direction that I'm supposed to be. Yeah. So I feel like things are just working out <laughs> happening the way they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So how can people connect with you if they'd like to connect with you? You have a Facebook page, correct? I have a Facebook page, Emily Newman, fine art. Um, I have an Instagram page, which is also Emily Newman Fine Art, where you can look on my website and see the products that I have, emilynewmanfineart.com. 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here today. I'm Tiffany Anton, and you're listening to Powered by Her in the Hints and Oakley Podcast Center.